see, and this has kind of got a wireframe on him. Everything that's done inside, so I'm, I'm telling you a whole lot of stuff kind of at random, because I didn't, I just wanted to come in and show you how I actually use this instead of trying to teach you some big thing. But I'm going to think of everything I see, I'm going to um, talk to you about. What is Lerps made out of? Uh, what shape do you see most prominent in Lerps? Triangles. So they used to call it polygons. It, it, when they originally started doing 3D games and 3D animation, you would talk about polygon count. Oh, man, this, I might be going into too much depth here, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. <laughs> now they use triangles. And the reason they use triangles is because there's a card inside your computer, a graphics card. The graphics cards are really smart. They do a lot of the work so that the, the game programmer, like me, I don't know how to do any of this stuff, but somebody that really, <laughs> really loves math has figured out how to take any, um, th these are also called meshes. You call it a mesh because it's almost like somebody took like a really tight fishing net and threw it over the top of lurks and then pulled it as tight as possible. So imagine there's a net that's made out of just triangles and they throw it over the top of, of lurks and pull it really tight. Each one of these triangles is showing a flat kind of surface. Everything in the game environment, they're really good at saying, if I have a light source and it's hitting this flat surface, like look at my hand right here, if it's straight on, you can see I get the most light. And as I turn it, you can see how it gets darker and darker and darker gradually. So the graphics card is smart enough to know all those different angles. All you've got to do it is tell it this plane like here is a flat, my flat hand, tell it what the orientation of that plane is relative to the light source. Like in this case, it's coming in from the projector. So if it's exactly normal to that light source, which you haven't learned yet, but uh, if it's exactly perpendicular, it's going to be the brightest, and it's going to fade away depending on this angle. That's what the triangles are really used for. Yeah? Does it have anything to do with the fact that all your, all your uh, polygons can be made up of triangles? Yes, very good. That's they right. They do know that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. The, so triangles are this great building block because you can make any shape out of it. And so here you can see, and, and and internally when you talk about when you, if you really get into this and you start downloading 3D models, they will talk about the polygon or the triangle count. And it's kind of like more is better because you can imagine if I only had three or four triangles to make lerps, it would look just like this big boxy dude. Um, the more triangles I get, it's kind of like the more resolution, like high def TV instead of low def TV. So the more triangles I get, the more realistic the three dimensional surfaces look. But I'm going way too deep. All right, I'm going to back up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can move him in any direction. Now this is like his starting place, but I, there were a couple of bugs that I showed you earlier, and I want to fix some of those bugs. So let's get on that. So if I hold down. I think it's the command key? No, it's the option key. No, it's the control key. If I hold down one of these keys, yeah, it's the control key. If I hold down the control key, I can move in one of these views, left and right. This is the W, A, S, and D. So A goes to the left. Actually, I'll go ahead and make this maximized again so it's easier to see. And this, this is the one thing about Unity I don't like so far is every time I go out, it wants to uh, it wants to go out to this wide view of the whole scene. I wish it would remember that I was focused on lerps, but for some reason it doesn't do that. So anyway, here's lerps. I've got W A S and D. If I hold down the control key and go um, ah lerps, hard to use this mouse because it's on an angle. So. Maybe it would work better if I didn't use mouse at all. So I can move him up and down, and I wanted to look at where the. Gosh, sorry. My mouse is plugging a smart board to I've got two lurks suddenly. I don't know how that happened. I'm moving his root joints, apparently, whatever that means. Um, but anyway, I, what I wanted to show was, if you notice at the beginning, there was this big heart, and he couldn't reach it. Well, why is that heart? 
It's because I've actually made this much larger than it's supposed to be and it's in the wrong place. So what you can do with this is just grab one of these dimensions, one of these dimensional arrows, and that'll move it through the scene. And so you do a lot of this in video game design. You do a lot of taking one thing, moving it around, and then trying to get it to the right place. Now, a second ago, that looked like it was in the right place. Yeah, okay, it's right next to Lerps. But when we go into the, the reason why we have the four split view is because we go into the four split view, look at the same thing that's selected, and where it looks okay in perspective, it looks kind of like Lerps can get to it. He's here, it looks kind of like it's there. But you can see from this, from the top-down view, it's actually off the edge of this circle. So here's th the circle Lerps is currently on. Oh, wow. I turned the smart word on. I'm not sure <laughs> this calibrate is not helping if I turn That's it. fine. That's way cool. So at any rate, um, when he goes off to the edge of that, you can see that this object that I selected, the heart, is so the edge that he can actually walk to is here. So that's way off the edge of the lower platform, and he's not going to be able to reach it. So that's why we go into the three splits. And this is the main reason, the main thing I wanted to show you guys is here's a way in a three-dimensional design tool that you need to take that just the X perspective, just the Y perspective, and just the Z perspective. And anytime you're doing video game design, you need to have things line up so, the, so that Lerps can actually grab that heart when the game plays. And so let's move it in. So here from the top-down view, let's move it in so it's actually next to Lerps. And then, whoa, what is going on there? You see, it's way bigger than he is. So again, the perspective thing that happened in art a few hundred years ago was that people realized to give the illusion that something's closer, you make it bigger. To give the illusion that something's further away, you make it smaller. Well, those illusions trick you as a video game designer all the time. So you think something's lined up, and you just go, and then you, you run the game, and you find out, no, this is way off. In fact, it's off because it looked like it was in the right place and the right, um, and, and the right size for, for alerts, but it was actually way too big. So what we're going to do instead now is change its size. And you notice what I did is I came up here. This is the movement click. I click on that to, to move it, just like I did a minute ago where I was pulling the different dimensions. Um, this changes the size. And so if I go to the little white thing here, I can make, I can make this way bigger or way smaller. I can make it <laughs> the size of the whole thing if I want. Um, and then this one here, the, the up in the right-hand corner, I can also rotate it. And so I can have the heartbeat upside down. And again, there's a lot of math going on. So look, here's the position. It's telling me within the world, the world, this whole, this whole place, there's kind of like the center of it is at zero, zero, zero. So now we're at x is 95 this way, and y is 15, negative 15 up. So that's 15 down. Um, and Z is a different direction. Now I'm changing these rotations, and you watch as I rotate it, um, it'll change in every different direction. So, so there I'm just, wrote, actually, I think that here I'm just rotating a 1x. No, I'm rotating with the axes. And same, same thing, when I resize it, you'll see the scale, scale will change. So these things are all represented internally in the computer by a certain set of numbers, and as I make it bigger or smaller, these numbers get bigger or smaller. So there is math everywhere. Now, if I say go, hopefully this heart will be closer to Lerps and in a place that you can get to it. And so here, here it is. This is the game view now. It's down in this bottom screen. And we can see that he can go pick up the heart. Yay! Even though it was weird and upside down. So that's kind of like the main thing I wanted to show you is how I end up having to use these different things. Oh, and the, the other thing to show is that in the perspective view, too, you see how normally it's off on this weird angle, but you can, you can cause it to lock in, and when you do, it's going to line up with one of those other ones. So in this case, I've locked into XY, and you can see it's going to match this XY view of the world from the side, except this way it's actually looking from the back instead of the front, so the X and the Y are switched. You see? Y, X is on the right side if you're looking from the back. X is on the left side if you're looking from the front. Way cool, eh? Or looking top down, I can have the Y like that. Um, so it'll say top, 
or I can go like that and look from the bottom. So you can get really dizzy <laughs> with your hands too. I'm going to show you one more thing, and then I want to I want you guys to ask whatever questions you're thinking of. So start thinking of questions if you don't already have any. Um, this I'm going to show you from a computer point of view, computer science point of view. I love this program because everything is what's called. Has anybody? I know Stuart has. Has anyone other than Stuart heard the phrase object oriented as applies to computers? Good. In the old days, computers were thought of as okay, there's computers work on stuff. We need to make the code that actually manipulates things really smart. And so everybody was focused on the code. And they kind of lost sight of the fact that the code inside computers always relates to something that's real in the real world. And so what would end up happening is they would get this huge, long pile of code that was dealing with a bunch of, bunch of different things in the world. And the more complicated that code got, the more, the better, the more jobs it tried to do, the more it kind of ended up needing to embed knowledge that had to do with all the complicated relationships between objects in the world. And about 20 years ago, some people that were really smart um, noticed that it was getting harder and harder to build computer programs that did more and more stuff. And they came up with a new way of looking at it, which is let's, look, let's instead divide our computer program into objects. So each object in the world, it's got some attributes of what it looks like. Like the little heart right there, that's an object. A, it's called a life pickup, um, health pickup right there. And so it's, it's an object, it's a, it's a heart, it's got, it looks certain ways, it's got this particular one, you can have multiple versions of an object, you can have, the, the, so I'm focused on one instance now, if I click on the next one, we're going to see a different instance of a heart, a different instance of a heart, notice each time the X, Y's and Z's are changing, because each one of those different hearts is at a different place in the world. Well, the cool thing that oh, object-oriented allowed us to do is we can say, remember how the heart was turning? That turning is an animation. So in this program, they have everything is based on first, anything that's worth doing in a video game probably has some visual representation. So let's, let's associate the code, the smarts, with how something's going to change in the game with the visible object. So in this case, the visible object is this heart. There's a transform saying where he lives at. And then there's the animation. And they all use this same little animation that um, has a turn. And, um, well, which is actually this rotator, not the animation. There are other places the animation does other stuff. Then there's this sphere collider. What does that mean? That means that we're actually representing in the game um, a sphere. Maybe if I click on it, it'll show up because it's different than that sphere. Uh, I don't know how to make it click up. But anyway. Uh, basically, the inside the game, associated with every one of these hearts, there's an invisible sphere all around it. And what that's used for is when the player's walking along, how do we know it's picked it up? Well, it's picked it up whenever some part of the player's, it's called a collision box, but it's basically the invisible box around the player intersects the invisible block around the heart, and there's lots of complicated math <laughs> that tells you whether or not that's happened. Um, that's when we know that it's been picked up. So a sphere collider is another thing that's associated with this object. If you want to, you could go in, you could do this with a little bit of work. Go home and change this to be from a sphere, you could make it a box or make it some different shape. And then you could stand right next to a heart and maybe you wouldn't pick it up if you weren't on the right angle. Um, so when you do pick it up, what's the script setting? So the script is actually code. So code 